Mr. Joyce, you joined us Sunday morning worship service. Let's stand and ask for God's blessing today in the service. Father, we thank you so much for the beautiful sunshine you've given us today, the beautiful warm weather. Thank you so much for today. And we just trust you'll help us in this service this morning, Lord. We, we covet your anointing and help, afresh and anew today. We need your help in the congregational singing, in the, in the prayer time, in the special song, the preaching word. Help us all, Lord. We, we need you. We're hungering, Lord. We're hungering for more of you, for more of your power and anointing in our daily living. Bless in every part of this service today. And we'll praise thee in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
pay attention to those words. Verse 4. Three days ago, he had a major heart attack. Uh, they had to do a mere emergency heart surgery. He's been, looks like he's going to be okay, but it's, he needs our prayers. So if you remember Marcus Latonic at this time, physically, and his wife, just a very difficult time for them. Remember Peggy Peak with cancer, Sandra Grable with cancer from Salem, Wesley Maley's cancer. The Lord that can touch him in a special way, help him spiritually so get right with God as well. Walter Bradshaw, the Lord will intervene for his situation. Dan Wolf, who we were praying for, his eye and vision. The Lord will touch him. Lori Harrison, with cancer, we've been praying for. Uh, pastoral voting across the connection today. The Lord will work out his will and the different pastoral voting taking place in the churches throughout the connection today. The Light of Smith, I close our revival today with Patrick Maley. Let's remember then the Lord can look at two of our services today. Conference leaders or missionaries, BWC, NIMS, or Christian Day Schools, any other spoken requests today? Okay, a seven year old boy family with these kids, or a big family. Do you have another request? Unspoken requests, I'm sure we have concerns on our hearts. Okay, let's all kneel and pray out.
having an abundance of quality of life. The good news is that not only did Jesus come to save us, but he also came to give us an abundant life in these last days. This is much like a second blessing. We receive eternal life when we're saved, plus life to the full. I'm convinced the reason why so many Christians are not living life to the full is because they don't know what it is today. Many Christians really don't think that such a life is available for them, and that's sad for, on their behalf. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This tells me that God desires that his children are living a life full of happiness, peace, and a genuine friendship with God. Through Jesus, it is without a doubt still available today in 2022. It can be done, and Jesus came to do it. Christians call this quality of life the abundant life. There really is an abundant life, and it does exist. Abundant living is a life that is filled with the things that are good for each one of us every day. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to John chapter 10. John 10, 1. <clears throat> These are Jesus' words. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth forth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, <clears throat> I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for this, to steal, to kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. And my text this morning is verse 10. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord, we're so glad for the privilege of serving you and knowing you. We're glad that we can live this abundant life in these last days when everything is so negative and depressing around us. We can still live an abundant life through Jesus Christ every day. Help us, Lord, use this message this morning to spur us on, to encourage us to go deeper in our walk with you that we can continue to live the abundant life in these last days and all that you do for us. We'll praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Well, let's look at the abundant life. People who enjoy the abundant life will possess all of these qualities. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Compassion, purity, humility, modesty, faith, character, wisdom, enthusiasm, dignity, optimism, confidence, honesty, and a relationship with God. In other words, the abundant life is full of all the things that money can't buy. Did you get that? All those words I described as a Christian living in abundant life. Money can't buy any of it. No matter how much money you have, you cannot buy more patience, more self-control, or salvation. Hardware stores do not sell wisdom or hope. And yes, you can possess all these qualities. You can get every one of these things from God for free. Who is the giver of all good things? The Bible says every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change. James 1, 17. But the Bible also says you do not have because you do not ask God. James 4, 2. Are you in pursuit this morning for the abundant life? The abundant life is free from the things that are bad for us. 
You see, everyone who lives the abundant life avoids these negative qualities, such as selfishness, hatred, lust, unforgiveness, envy, jealousy, fear, drunkenness, sexual immorality, discord, fits or rage, dishonesty, greed, gossiping, slander, pessimism, and despair. In other words, people with these issues often spend lots of money on therapy and marriage counseling in order to keep from destroying themselves and their relationships with their loved ones. The more these negative qualities are part of a person's behavior, the farther they are from obtaining this thing I call the abundant life. And yes, God can remove all these negative characteristics from a person's life. Every one of them. See, God is greater than our sins. At one time, the people of Corinth lived a life full of much wickedness and evil. But when Jesus was introduced to these people by the power and grace of God, many were able to free themselves from his immoral actions. In fact, Paul wrote, and this is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. You see, if the Christians were able to get free from these destructive behaviors by the grace of God, that means that you can this morning as well in 2022. It doesn't matter that you're hot-tempered, for example. God can change that in you. So it's no longer an excuse to say, well, this is who I am. I can't change that. You must accept me as I am. No, we don't. We don't do that. People who are living in the abundant life do not walk around like a warm can of soda pop that is about to explode at any minute. Everybody can be free from their personal weaknesses, causing pain and embarrassment to themselves. Just That's just one of the benefits of living the abundant life. Abundant life is found in Christ and nowhere else, by the way. Everyone who does not have Jesus in their life will not be able to experience true abundant living. No doubt, many non-Christians can experience some happiness and satisfaction in their lives. But that is usually because they practice the qualities that make up the abundant life, such as patience, integrity, and kindness. They also avoid many of the things that destroy the abundant life, such as despair, pessimism, sexual immorality, substance abuse, etc. However, Jesus said that unless we believe in him, we will all die in our sins. John 8, 24, we must therefore realize that no matter how much happiness a non-Christian experiences, it is unfortunately limited in quality and it's only temporary. The facts are anyone without the saving grace of God is spiritually dead. A person cannot live the abundant life if they're spiritually dead. The Bible says God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Ephesians 2, 4. If you're in Christ, the abundant life is waiting for you. God is inviting each one of us to experience an abundant life this morning. The Bible says God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Did you catch that this morning? It is God's desire that all his children discover happiness and satisfaction in this life. We are commanded to rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4.4. 4. It will be my pleasure to obey that command. Don't you agree? Unfortunately, many Christians are still missing out on the abundant life. Perhaps they do not believe that such a life is truly available to them in 2022. Notice in John 10.10 10, that Jesus did, not, Jesus did not say in John 10.10, 10, I come that some may have life to the full. No, it doesn't say that. It says all believers, our circumstances are in life. I'm sorry. All believers are invited to discover abundant living. It's available to all God's children no matter what their circumstances are in life. This is a hard concept for many Christians to accept today. Many assume the abundant life depends on circumstances, or fate, or luck, or their bank account, or their status in life, or their good health. No doubt these things are highly valued in our lives, 
But Jesus said, what is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. Luke 16, 15. Wealth, power, status, and worldly pleasure have nothing to do with living the abundant life. Zig Ziglar, a Christian motivation, motivational speaker and author, wrote a book that greatly describes the abundant life called Over the Top. In it, he tells a true story of a remarkable man named Charlie Wedemeyer from Los Gatos, California. Charlie coached the high school football team in Legatus to the only state championship that they've ever won. One day, Zig Ziglar attended a practice session with Charlie and his team. As the two of them were carrying on an extended conversation from the sidelines during a football practice, <clears throat> periodically an assistant coach would run up and ask questions about an offensive or defensive assignment. It might be, how do you keep them from trap blocking on their play? And without hesitation, Charlie, who had been watching intently during their entire conversation, would spell out the specifics that he should follow. A few moments later, another coach would come by with a question, and again, Charlie had an answer ready for them. Zig Ziglar noted that the amazing thing was that the only parts of Charlie's body he could move were his eyes and his mouth. So picture that. Charlie Wedemeyer suffered from Lou Gehrig's disease. This disease had physically affected Charlie so dramatically <clears throat> that no sound could come from his mouth. His wife, Lucy, was his interpreter. She would read his lips and effectively delivered the message. Yet, Charlie had the most remarkable attitude and the greatest sense of humor. Not only did Charlie coach football, but he traveled and spoke regularly to people in churches, schools, businesses, and prisons. He and Lucy communicated a powerful message, folks, of faith, hope, and courage, love, and a never-give-up spirit, which are all ingredients to the abundant life, aren't they? On May of 1992, Charlie was honored as the Disabled American of the Year by President Bush. Charlie, who was once Hawaii's athlete of the decade for the 1960s, wrote an inspirational book called Charlie's Victory. He might be the only speaker in America who can't speak, but he still speaks. Charlie lives the abundant life despite his circumstances. As you look around this world, you will notice many who are far less than you or I, but have overcome their situations of poverty, physical limitations, child abuse, or other difficulties, and discovered the abundant life that Jesus has promised. Let's now look on how to identify the abundant life. The abundant life means that there's an abundance of something. This, of course, is referring to life itself. Such a person is getting the most out of life. They are living it to the fullest. They are not just merely existing or simply trying to make a living. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25, to not worry about our life, what we will drink or eat, and what we will wear. If we allow ourselves to remain preoccupied with what we consider to be basic necessities, we will not be able to enjoy the abundant life at all. It's a mistake to allow the urgent to control you because that will cause you to miss out on what truly is important. As you learn to see what life is all about, you will begin to see all around you many who are successfully living their own life to the, to full, to the full. These people quietly go about their lives full of meaning and hope, happiness, satisfaction and health, vitality and peace of mind. They enjoy quality friendships, have good family relations, and a strong faith in God. Their life becomes an adventure worth living. Let's look at what the abundant life is not. It is not necessarily a life of comfort and ease. Sometimes we need to go through the fire 
in order to, for it to melt away the impurities that are still inside us. This is how God refines us. In fact, that's why James said in James 1, 2, consider pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Second, it is not dependent on outside circumstances. It's not what happens to you that is nearly as important as you, how you respond to it. Some of the greatest men in our country grew up in poverty and other extreme hardships. Third, it is not glamorous, flashy, or outwardly impressive. The abundant life is much like that small gate and narrow road that Jesus told us about in Matthew 7, 13. The reason why so few will find it, because it takes more effort even to notice it. It has no flashing lights, no whistles or bells. Fourth, it is not necessarily obtained quickly. You see, people can receive eternal life fairly quickly as long as they live, have a little faith. It's not that way with the abundant life. It may take a few years before a person can experience it because it is a process that takes over time. Don't allow that to discourage you, though. A person who's 100 pounds overweight may take longer to reach their ideal weight than someone who's only 10 pounds overweight. Nevertheless, they can still achieve their goal even if it takes longer. Well, in the same way, the process for some people to obtain the abundant life may take longer because some people carry around a little more spiritual baggage than others do. Some baggage may also be harder to turn loose of. The point is, a few years from now, Lord willing, we're all going to be a few years older. Either, either you will be a few years older and enjoying the abundant life, or you'll be a few years older and still not have it. But the choice is yours today. Five, it is not easy to obtain this abundant life. This should not be surprising. Almost everything in life worthwhile tends to be harder to obtain and require more effort to keep it. Good habits are like that. A good description of abundant living. You are living the abundant life when you, first of all, clearly understand that failure is an event, not a person. That yesterday ended last night, and today is your brand new day to start fresh and anew. Second, you have made friends with your past, are focused on the present, and optimistic about your future. Third, you know that success doesn't make you, and failure doesn't break you. You are filled with faith, hope, and love, and live without anger, greed, guilt, envy, or thoughts of revenge. Five, you're mature enough to delay gratification and shift your focus from your rights to your responsibilities. Six, you know that failure to stand for what is morally right is the prelude to being the victim of what is criminally wrong. Seven, you are secure, secure in who you are, so you are at peace with God as well as with your fellow man. Eight, you have made friends of your adversaries and have gained the love and respect of those you know best. You understand that others can give you pleasure, but genuine happiness comes from doing things for others. 10. You are pleasant to the grouch, courteous to the root, and generous to the meek. Let me read that again. That's powerful. Because we all have to work on this. All of us do. Doesn't matter how sanctified you are. We are to be pleasant to the grouch, courteous to the rude, and generous to the meek. That's a heap of living, folks, but that's how God wants us to live. 11. You love the unlovable, give hope to the hopeless, friendship to the friendless, and encouragement to the discouraged. 12. You can look back in forgiveness, forward in hope, down in compassion, and up with gratitude. 13, you know that he would be the greatest among you, must become the servant of all. And 14, you recognize, confess, develop, and use your God-given physical, mental, and spiritual abilities to the glory of God and for the benefit of mankind. As a Christian, you can know how to receive this abundant life. There's not a magic formula. 
God graciously gives it to all who seek it. Matthew 7, 7-9 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Matthew 7, verse 11 says, If you don't believe you are living in the abundant life this morning, ask God to give it to you. He can help you to think on the positive things of life and not the negative. An elderly man who lived alone in Idaho wanted to kill, I'm sorry, he wanted to till his sizable potato garden. But it was back-breaking work. And his son, who used to help him, was recently sent to jail. The old man mentioned this in a letter he sent to his son. He wrote, I'm not sure exactly what to do. I'm just getting too old to be digging up a garden plot. It looks like I won't be able to plant that garden this year after all. A few days later, he received a short note from his son. Dad, remember in prison, everything they check out in every letter that goes out in prison. And this is what his son said. Dad, for heaven's sakes, don't dig up that garden. That's where he buried the loot from the heist. At 4 a.m. the next morning, a crew of police officers arrived to find the stolen property. After them digging for hours, they gave up, apologized to the old man, and left. A few days later, the elderly gentleman received another letter from his son. Dear Dad, under these circumstances, that's the best I can do. You should be able to plant your potatoes now. <laughs> Talk about foresight of the son. <laughs> Sometimes we are like the stubborn earth, a stubbornness that stands in the way of experiencing a fully transformed life in Christ Jesus. Instead of trusting God, instead of taking his commandments and promises to our heart, we let this flesh take control of our life. We let the flesh harden our hearts. We don't allow the garden of our soul to be tilled. That's what revival services are all about. We remain in a potential garden, a potential garden in need of being tilled, tilled by the one who is the way, the truth, and the life by Jesus. And beloved, a potential untilled garden will become hardened over time. We as Christians must continue to work at the job of living this abundant life. Don't let society detain you this morning. Don't let the world around you tie you down. Don't let yourself be changed with its selfish and greedy attitudes. Let's look at the story of Jesus in Mark, where Jesus delivered the demon-possessed man. This really reveals the people's hearts <coughs> and damage. It really does. The people in the village were not concerned about the demonized man in Mark chapter 5 that we read about. They were concerned only for themselves. They were concerned only for their own comfort and income. They put the man in chains to try and keep him away. And when Jesus healed him, they were more concerned about the loss of their pigs than they were the health of this man. Mark 5, 14 to 17, those ten English pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. You see, the pigs represented a considerable income for the town people. They realized the pigs to be sold at market in this Gentile section of the country. <clears throat> but when Jesus' action destroyed their lucrative source of income, they feared further losses should Jesus stay in their town. And that's why they asked him to leave. Again, the pigs teach us a very important lesson about humanity. Not only do they teach us that Satan is the destroyer, and he is, they teach us that the world is selfish and self-centered. War 
Warren Wiersbe says, and I quote, the destruction of the pigs revealed the spiritual condition of the people of that, dis of that district. They would rather have their swine than have the Savior. Can you imagine? Money was more important than the healing of this man or the salvation of their own souls. You see, Jesus was coming to town to be a blessing to them. He could have healed more people in their town, brought the good news of the kingdom, and pushed away a lot more darkness. But the people would rather have their pigs than the power of Jesus at work in their town. So they begged him to leave. They were chained by their own self-interest and greed. And so are many people today in 2022 in our nation. Whenever money come, becomes more important than meeting the needs of people, or whenever money becomes more important than enjoying the presence of Jesus, then we have chained ourselves with the selfish and self-centered attitudes of our world. Please, don't miss out on all that Christ wants to do for you and through you by putting your money ahead of him. Please, if you want to enjoy a full and abundant life, then don't let Satan destroy you. And don't let society's attitude detain you. Instead, trust the Savior to deliver you. Depend on Christ to make a difference in your life every day. Rely on him to change you from the inside out. And I want to close this morning to let you know I'm so glad that we can, folks, live this abundant life in 2022 because of Jesus and our commitment to keep him number one in our daily life. Shall we stand? Brother Young, as we close in prayer, please. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for this another privilege we've had of being in your house. Yeah. The sound of your word today. Yes. And to be with us as we go from your house, that we'll go as Christians. Yeah. And live the holy life that can have an effect upon others. Would you help us each one, we pray in Jesus.